The experience that got me into painting was going into a museum in Paris and first seeing a painting, which must have been eight by 10 or 12, called The Three Musicians by Picasso. And I'd never seen anything like it. You look at a photograph in a book like this. When you walk in a painting, you walk right into the painting and you fall right down. I fell right down. And then I got up and, and I walked into this small room, which had Sandra Delaunay painting, it had a Matisse painting, it had a Brock painting, it had a Dolly painting, it had a Picasso painting. I sat there all day. And I was just spellbound. I could not believe how beautiful, interesting, and directly expressive the stuff was all the way around. I walked out and said, I gotta do this. It was like, this is really worth doing. Everybody, anybody can do this. You don't have to go to school to do this. You need to just take a, a brush and a color. And I've been fooling around, but I didn't really paint uh, till I had that experience. I did do a painting. That was the Janus painting. It was the era of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, of, of, of Back to the Land. Of, uh, there was a, a, a rising optimistic feeling about what life was about. It was all this fabulous San Francisco sound coming across the country and saying everybody ought to wake up. And it, it was like the place was waking up. Somehow I, I went to Philadelphia or, or Atlantic City and there was a Jefferson Airplane, Janis Joplin, Big Brother and the Holding Company. This was what was going on. This was an exciting time to be alive. And someone comes in the house and says, Janis is dead. You know, and it's like, we all started crying. We just were. So I painted it. So I painted. That's why I did it. We were all heartbroken. Picasso's blue period, his emotive love of people, the way he paints the people, the way you feel his heart, the way you see the lines of the painting, it is sheer genius. Anybody ever wondered why Picasso is a genius? You gotta look and feel the paintings. You don't look at them, you feel the paintings. You feel the art, that's how you feel, that's what the art is. When you can feel the art, the art is getting somewhere. That was where all of a sudden you say, how can you do that? How do you do that? How do you get into yourself to be able to do something that isn't a photograph, that is some other level that really captures an important part of being alive? It was a continually developing process. I didn't really understand a lot of this stuff. It's that you walk around in a museum and you look at paintings and, and, and all of a sudden some of it just, you feel it. You, it's not like it's your brain taking a look at colors and seeing whether you like the lines. It's that you feel the pathos, the sadness, the, the, the tragedy of Guernica. You feel when they're bombing people, innocent people, for, you know, doing the militarism. And Picasso was a pacifist. He cared about what was going on all over the place in the paintings. That, and you look at Dora Maar, and she's literally tearing the flesh off her body, and she's crying, and she's crazy, and she's nuts. And all this stuff is what, this is what this is about. It's not pretty things you put in the magazine to sell to sell bracelets, right? It's something else. It's the stuff of, of that matters to you in your life. And so ultimately we get to the struggle of the earth and the earth is in our hands. But in the meantime, we have the karma of our times. It means everything that you face that becomes embedded in your mind and perception that you have to deal with. That's what karma of our times means. And everything that we are every day engaged in, those are our karmas. So the karma of our times, K-O-O-T. So these are coots. Here's another example of a coot. And as I look at this, there's a lot of things like Egyptian, Assyrian, Greek, some of the overlays of different, wow, I can't even believe you did this, huh? There's a deer right over here. And so one could say, well, how many folks are in this painting? If there's one, two, three, four. Every one of us has seen more people like this in a month, usually. Do you remember any of them? No. Do you remember some of them? Maybe. 
67. So there's a lot of folks in these paintings, right? All of a sudden, the paintings are deeper than you might from a distance. See, when you step into them, they have a whole nother story. And here's a good example of another coot. And this coot is the texture of community. There's, each one of these compartments is a separate scene. I mean, so, for example, here, I mean, when I get a side view of a face like this, so that all the figures here are inside this head, yeah. right? So it's, it's sometimes uh, the painting gels at the very end that the major pattern emerges of the whole thing. Others, it never happens that way. And you, until you get into the painting, you, you don't even have any idea what the painting is about, which I think is valuable because most of the time, photographs give you, people look at photographs, click. They don't jump into the photograph at the next level and they don't jump into paintings at the next level. But this says, you got to look in to find out, which is what it is. You got to look inside to find out what's going on. You got to figure out what is this about? And the answer is, I have no idea what this is about. This is a coot. It's karma. Everybody's immersed in it. And it's sort of saying, this is what's going on in the society right now. There are waves of karma of, of all sorts of attitudes and, uh, and that are not healthy for a sustainable world and for a sustainable society. And if we don't look at some of these things in a way that is other than ways we've looked at it and decided about it, that's what art is about. It's saying, open the door, take a look. Why not explore something else? But part of the coots really are the struggle for the earth because that's the karma of our times. So this one, those four figures, Ringo, John, Paul, and George, right, were the Beatles. And the whole thing was about ascension. Can we ascend from all the karma? Can we actually solve the real problems that we have on the world? The Beatles were incredibly good for us. They expressed all the positive part we needed after living through the Vietnamese War and constantly struggling with the war machine every day of our lives. More people going to fight, more people getting weapons, more people building more weapons, more people poisoning the earth to be able to get what? So the struggle for the earth is the struggle with the military, the struggle with totalitarianism, the struggle with religions that believe that the only people that matter are their people. And, and on and on and on, and we are still in the middle of the struggle. I am immensely and continuously influenced by Bob Dylan and the Grateful Dead. Every moment I'm alive, all the time, when I paint, when I think, when I garden, all the time, I am influenced by them. It's the words, it's the music, it's, I, I, I listen to, you know, the vision, uh, Desolation Row. Uh, when, I, when I was in a laboratory in the Institute of Cancer Research in Columbia University in Manhattan, of oh, Desolation Row, I'm listening to this song, I'm mixing up nucleic acids and radioactivity and fluorescence and putting together enzyme assays and putting them in assimilation counter. And, 20 minutes later, I'm listening to the same song, and I realized I'd never heard anything like it. I didn't know what happened. You know, it was like a magic wand went bing, and all of a sudden, your mind opened up, and you realize there's something there. This is not science. This is something else, right? I've learned to Bob Dylan. Right, that changed my life. But, so, that's Shelter from the Storm. Oh, I, this is nice painting. Wow. This is called Extinction. So what we've been talking about is, this is the sixth major extinction going on right now. And what we'd like to avoid is having it wipe out all the mammals and all the angiosperms and all, you're not going to kill life on this world, no matter what you do. You can set up as many bombs as you want, you're not going to destroy viruses, you're not going to destroy bacteria, you're not going to destroy microscopics on all sorts of issues but you will destroy everything you love that you know about life. And we're in the middle of the struggle of just that issue. Can we finally wake up and know that we do not need to use petroleum products to run automobiles? We do not need nuclear energy to boil water. We can have other, more intelligent solutions. Put a solar cells on everybody's roof on the whole United States and let's get out of the mess about fuel, about function, about 
cooperating to make a world where everybody can get an education. Can't everybody get an education and not go in debt? Can't everybody have a chance? Everybody needs a chance. Otherwise, we don't have a chance. There's a painting right back there, and it's called Green One Trucking. It's like trucking through the three-dimensional, six-dimensional, 15-dimensional reality space that everybody really lives in and looking at it and saying, don't we treasure this? Isn't this what's really wonderful about being alive? Why don't we all work together and make it better? Otherwise, I wouldn't have painted. Picasso said, you need a paint. You need a paint. You don't have to know how to paint. You just need a paint. And so the struggle for the earth, these are the paintings that came out of growing up in this era with nuclear weapons and with uh, exorbitant uh, property trips on life. How can you patent living organisms that were here 100 million years before you were here, right? It's theft. It's not reality. You know, uh, this to me is what keeps me sane, that I can actually feel coherently able to express stuff that I care about in a way that it just gets better. And it's not that you make anything from selling a painting. It's that the body of work has significance enough to become worthwhile as the successor to modern art. This is using modern art, talking about the issues of our times, and the issues are relevant and the paintings are unique. That's a coot. I can tell that. This is one of another kind. It's not commercial art. It's uh, other times. The themes that uh, enliven the paintings have, done, have to do with being part of the counterculture of music that's happened in the last 40, 50, 70 years. I mean, from the blues and to the jazz, to rock and roll, to uh, the great musicians and people who have inspired our lives because they sing and care about the earth and the world we live in. So this is a good example because here it is. The earth is in our hands, and what happens is I really believe that the peace sign is when you have your hands up like this and you're standing up, that's the peace sign. Okay, so this is my symbol for the peace sign. The earth is in our hands and you have peace in your other hands. So this was like one of the primary where I didn't even know what I was doing, but I, all of a sudden it said, the earth is in our hands and we want peace. And then here, you got another one. Why? It's nice to have this. The earth is in our hands. And all of a sudden you're painting, planting rows of vegetables in a field. Right? And there's a family of people and somebody who's also a, a, a girl who's got the earth in her hands. That's what she's thinking about. Right? I mean, that, the paintings are about our lives. Right? And, so, and they're continuously about our lives and they are both realistic somewhat and abstract somewhat. Right? So having the paintings allows me to not have to talk the words as much as say, here's the illustration of what it is we're talking about. If you paint enough, you get a chance to look at some of the things that you care about that you are too bound up to see. So the more you do it, the more you all of a sudden, oh, that's what, that painting there with the purple around it, it's called double sight. All right, I, I like that idea of double sight. It's that you really see out of two eyes and of two brains, you have double sight. Everybody's got double sight. But most of the time, we don't see what it means because unless we understand what it is, we can't see it. The brain's a peculiar functioning integrator. And if we don't have enough stuff to integrate, we end up not seeing very far, right? So that's the same issue about uh, how to educate a, a world, how to have it so, uh, so life matters, not wealth or gain or ego or position, but how do we do that? Yeah, I don't know how to think about the work itself, you know. Uh, what I see is that uh, the issues surround us. So I'm glad when I painted series of Struggle for the Earth or The Earth is in Our Hands. These are the things that come up every time I paint. So I, I appreciate to be able to keep expressing it. And I mean, that's one of the things about being alive. You can discover more about existence, and so I like to do that. I look back over the years, what you interesting and what wasn't interesting so much, and how it changes. And 
Some of these paintings, I've had them hanging here for 10, 15 years. I get up every once in a while with a brush and start to repaint certain areas of the painting, you know. And I think, wow. And then, you know, the same thing here. I, I don't know if I had a canvas or not, but you know, you said, well, you know, you can paint on the wall. You know, you can paint your clothes. You, you, can, you, know, you can express yourself, you know, and I like that, you know, because I see that most of us get it, become audiences to other people's work rather than in their own right do stuff that makes them have more self-esteem and interest in being alive. It was always the question, if you love it, you should show your kids what you love. If they see you painting a lot, they're more likely to pick up a brush and start painting or a pencil and start drawing or be able to express themselves in a simple way that it gives them some uh, way of understanding more about both themselves and the world. So yeah, that's how I feel about the painting. Certainly a lot of the early days when you went to a Grateful Dead concert, everybody in the whole room got along. It didn't matter what your politics were. None of that mattered. Everybody got a great feeling of being alive together. What has happened to us? Now we worry, we strive. Uh, there's violence everywhere you look. There's bragging about weapons and there's more, uh, there's, there's pride in torturing people and killing. We have lost the way, right? And so why are the paintings? The painting's about this is part of the way back, right? That's what modern art did. It said you can look at existence a different way. You can look at somebody and they're not just one head and one face with a nice portrait. They've got three faces inside each face and inside those faces there's another ten faces and they got their relatives and their aunts and their uncles and their cousins and their friends and their enemies all inside themselves and the paintings have one, two, ten, twenty, fifty, seventy, a hundred faces in them because you're painting the community, you're painting who you see that day, you're painting who's inside you talking to you that you didn't even recognize or remember. That's all part of the personas that we all carry. But the painting is not just a nice little portrait of, of whatever. It's a much more complicated thing. The portal has 50 or 75 faces in it. You start to look in the painting. It's not just a simple thing. Life is not a simple thing, right? We could simplify everything so we can remain stupid, but we can't do that anymore because the computer says, I got enough information that you can spend the rest of your life learning. You can always be learning and you can always learn new things and you can find out how great life is. But if you don't have that feeling about life, what good is it, right? So it's like opportunity. Anybody can paint. You can pick up a pencil and a piece of paper and you can make a drawing, right? It's not held only from wealth or privilege or access. It has to do with just like planting seeds. You, want, you like lettuce? Plant some lettuce. You like to not be poisoned? Grow organic. Right? There are fundamental things that we have shared that need to be going on in the world that are not going on enough. So how are you going to talk about it? Pain about it. Right?